How's it guys? Uh, I'm here with Alan again, my closure comrade. Comrade in closure. And today we're doing a super cool one. We're going to, uh, we're going to look at how lazy sequences work in closure and the benefits of using them. Is that fair? I'd say we're going to use them and see, <laughs> and see a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <cool. laughs> well, we hope, you know. That's... Yeah, we hope we'll see a benefit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What have we got going on here? <laughs> um, okay, we've got some data, which is in a JSON file. It's called data.json. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to read that into memory. We're going to assign it to our variable called posts. Uh, I think what is in that data.json file is a whole list of posts. Like blog posts, yeah. And then, and then we're going to just transform the data a little bit in just like some trivial ways. Um, we're just gonna compare yeah. doing it in a lazy way and a non-lazy way. Yeah, let's maybe first we'll just have a quick look at some of the data. So shall we just look at the first thing inside of post? There we go. So we've got a user ID, an ID and a title, a body, and that's it. So we'll do something to the title. What does it, we'll, we'll make it into a very long URL, URL slug. Okay, let's do that. Let's slugify the title. We'll slugify it, even though, I mean, it's going to be super long, but, you know, it's <laughs> SEO, you know, it's, it's important. We'll just create a function. We'll call it like uh, transform, because we're going to transform things. We're going to take the posts. Um, let's map over these posts. Here's our posts. So now we've got our post. Um, maybe what we'll do is we'll take out the title. We'll destructure it. We'll grab the title like that. We'll call that post. Yeah. Wait, so the, the as, um, as post, post will still be the, the complete individual element and title is the destructured field from post. Yeah. Yeah, we're, okay. just, we're grabbing the title key, uh, assigning it to the variable title. So cool. I can, we can quickly see what that's going to do. We'll just return title right there. Um, let's hold on. Let's call transform on our posts. It's going to get a lot of a lot of posts. Maybe maybe uh, we'll, we'll maybe we'll take a whoops <laughs> whoops. Okay, so, so so just so everyone knows, like we have twenty eight megabytes worth of data here because yeah. we want to like show iterating through a lot of data. Yeah. So. Um, and I don't think you can get much more data than 28 megabytes. I think it's, it's <laughs> probably like every post on the internet. Like, yeah. like every... <laughs> so let's just, let's, let's try just get two. And you basically have the whole of medium yes. in the data.json file. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. So, so now we've got two titles that I've returned. So you can see what title was. It's just the string at title. Yeah. So, so that's cool. So now we want to uh, we want to slugify them. So maybe we'll just write a little function called that. I doubt you can get a library that do, does this. It seems a bit complicated. <laughs> uh, so replace takes the string a match and a replacement. So the string will match on space and we'll replace it with. A dash, because that's how your L's are. So, um, so you're using regex there, and I suppose you define you're saying declaring it as regex with the, the pound sign. Yeah. So in closure, that signifies a regular expression. So it's always the pound sign, and then it's a string. Yeah. And then we're good to go. Cool. So um, <clears throat> yeah. So just replacing all spaces with a hyphen. Yeah. Yeah. So so now we've. We've added Slugify to our map. Uh, now we'll just run it and see what happens. Okay, there we go. So our title is now a, a URL or a URI, a bit of a URL. <laughs> so, so that's cool, but that's that's not that's not really what we want. We still want the rest of the post, um, and we don't really want to replace the title with the slug because then we have no more title. So what we'll do is we'll just We'll just put 
put a new key into our post. We'll call it slug. Am I doing that right? Yeah, I think let's check. Key value, yeah, there we go. Cool, so associ <laughs> associ <laughs> associates uh, the keyword slug uh, with the value into the post. So if it's kind of the same as saying like post dot slug is equal to this, if you're working in a... Exactly, yeah, sounds familiar. Sounds about right. Let me, let me see if I can just make this look a little prettier. Alrighty, so there it's, I've made it a bit bigger. You can see we now have a slug. So what, what we could have done is used update here instead of a soch, um, and then we wouldn't have had to have destructured. But what would have happened then is that we would have updated the title key. Because we want a new key, we use a soch oh, okay. have title. So, so there we go. Um, so we've done one thing. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think this, is this post ready, you know, to like, I don't know, be written to a database or something? Do, we, do you want to do more stuff to it? Let's sentence case the title. Sentence case, okay. Um, I, wonder, I wonder if we've got a function that can do capitalize. Sounds promising. Ah, oh, yeah. Hmm, hmm. What was that function that where we so want, we split on space? It's explode. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the PHP version. <laughs> um, is it not split? String dot split. So let's let's check that out. Ah, genius, genius. So string and regular expressions. So we'll go hi there again. I'll, I'll friend the space. Okay, so now we've got hi there. Uh -huh. so, cool. so you're basically just getting a vector of words. Yeah. Going to map over the vector and apply string capitalized to. So we're, yeah, there we go, almost there. So now we'll want to. Is it. Uh, and then convert it back to a string. Yeah. Is, was it join? I can't remember. No. Can't you use apply mm, mm. string? That is how you do it, yes. So uh, this apply this apply function always used to get me, but what it does is it basically spreads all the all the values in the array and makes them arguments. So a function like string takes um, a mult like can take any amount of arguments. I don't know what interpose does. It interposes things. <laughs> it just like, um, so if you have, uh, like it takes a separator, which will make a dash, then it takes a collection. I see, okay, and it'll join them together. No, it just adds, it adds oh. something between each, each thing in the collection. That's awesome, okay. There is another way to do this, I've just forgotten it. Like, you don't need to use interpose, but anyway. Well, that's, that's cool, okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll call this, what did you call it, sentence case? Yeah, well, all the... Sentence case, and <laughs> we take a string. This, this doesn't look very pretty, does it? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, I suppose when we replace the like hard coded stuff with variables, it might look a bit nicer. Um, we could. Whoopsie. But we'll thread it. we'll just thread it and, and then we'll be done. Okay, so basically uh, what threading does, you got the double thread. So you're gonna take the the result of the function and it'll become the last argument supplied to the following function. Yeah. Pretty much. This is beautiful. It's art. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So we're threading it. So we've got, we've got our string that we've split with spaces. We're putting it through map with capitalized. We're putting spaces in between, and then we're converting it back Five. back to a string. So we're just going to change high there to the string. Ah. You don't want all of our blog posts to have hi there in them. 
It would be a very friendly blog post. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll just test it real quick. With high there again after I mangled it. Okay, there we go. So I suppose now we could update. We can see how update works. Yeah, now we can do that update. So the first thing we'll do is we'll want to thread this because you know it's not we don't we don't want to like use a let if we don't have to. So that's cool. So threading for the win. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So now we'll introduce our update. So we're going to update the post um, at title. And we're going to use our sentence sentence case function. Cool. So the, the difference now between the single arrow thread is that the the first the result of the first function is going to be passed as the first argument. Yeah. So it's it's the same as saying update, uh, then the post. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's the same as saying that, and that's because a search returns the whole post. Yeah, a search actually returns the result. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. so the the map. It's just going through each of these functions getting changed. Yeah. yeah. Almost like a pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like that's a really important a point uh, like important point to make. That as that post, that post is like never affected. The original post is never going to have the slug. Only only the result of yeah. the search post will have the slug in it. Yeah, so so when like post here and post that gets returned are, are two different things. Yeah, that's why um, the threading macro is so useful because when, when you switch to functional programming, you don't want to keep hold of things all over the place because it becomes much more difficult. Yeah. So when you use the threading macro, it just makes life a hundred times easier. So where are we? We've got our transform. It's doing two things. So let's take our two posts again. Okay, so there's our title. It looks like a, it's a sentence case. Um, slug is there, yeah. Cool. Nice. Now it's ready to. We can post this on Medium. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what what we want to do? So so this is lazy, right? So That's let's um, let's copy transform. And we'll just change this to map V. And then we'll see if we have, if, if there's a difference. So what we want to do is take... Just do it one. Take one. Oh, you're fine. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so... So we've got our transform okay, well, function. Should we just explain, uh, like explain the time? So time is basically a function which... Um, Tells you how long it's taken to run everything inside of it. Yeah, yeah, it just times it. And it, it <laughs> yeah, it all times it. And then take takes the out of the vector. Uh, it will take the very first result. So mm. it's basically, like taking the at index zero. Yeah, it just says give me yeah. one thing, and one thing is the first thing. So and yeah, that, that's it. So with transform, we're using map. And map is a lazy function. It will only compute on demand. Uh, transform non-lazy, we're using map v, which is non-lazy because it returns a vector and vectors don't support lazy evaluation. Um, map returns a, a list which supports lazy evaluation. So we'll just take one from transform. We'll see how long that takes. There's our blog post. That took... 0.04 milliseconds, nice and quick. We'll do the same with transform non-lazy. That took 887 milliseconds. So the reason that is slower is because this map over here is going through all 100,000 posts in this data set. Once it's done doing that, it gets returned and then take gives us one. Over here, Take says, um, we ask for one, and then map only operates on the first one, only on one, and then it returns that. It doesn't, it yes. doesn't just carry on until the end of the data set. So that's, like, that's a super powerful concept. That's compute only when you need to compute, basically, mm -hmm. is what the program is doing. Yeah. It's, so, 
it, it's very lazy. It doesn't like computing. <laughs> yeah. And that's given to you for free in closure. That's basically a free concept that's actually encouraged more than given to you. Well, it's, 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 it seems to be the default. Like map mm. is the default versus map V is the exception. Yeah, so, so a whole bunch of um, functions like you know, like the common ones, map, filter, just the common functional <laughs> functions. <laughs> uh, they're all lazy. So when you're busy writing your code, you don't even really notice. It's just lazy. It's just lazy by default. When I wrote this, I intentionally used map v so it wouldn't be lazy. Um, yeah. Sometimes you don't want things to be lazy and then you can, you can like use map v or just do things to stop them being lazy but most of the time you just do it you don't care about it and things just get computed on demand so cool well that's 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 it eh? yeah i think that's i mean there's obviously much more to it i'm no expert on laziness well at least in closure <laughs> uh, but uh, you know when it's not lazy the work gets done on all a hundred thousand things when it is lazy it's only on what you're actually using if you were paginating and you, your program had happened to have everything in memory, you know, you could just give back a bit at a time. <laughs> paginating and transforming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think this is too far from a practical example of it, mm. where, you, where you're changing data in a map and the map is particularly large. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot of the time when you're reading a file, if the file is too large, you'll read it in a lazy, in a lazy way. You know, you'll just grab a line at a time. Especially if you're searching through a file. If you find something before the end, you know, you're going to gain if you found it in a lazy way. The idea of this video is that, like, this is something that is given to you for free in the language. And something that you don't really think about. Yeah. I mean, uh, you work in Clojure every day and I doubt you think of, like, lazy versus non-lazy. No, not really. That often. Not really. Yeah. No. So, whereas, I think, uh, at least with JavaScript... It's, it, everything is realized at the time, mm. unless you're using, um, I don't know, immutable JS, something like that. Right, yeah. Sweet. Thanks, Alan. I appreciate the time, dude. You're welcome. <laughs> cool. Cheers, dude. Bye. <laughs> Bye.